So we've just arrived here at the Manx Museum in Douglas on the Isle of Man. And we're here really to look at the megalithic sites of the area as well as investigate some of the giant's graves and giant accounts that we have from uh, this island. Now this is traditionally the centre of Britain and especially the work of John Michel. It is perfectly in the centre from between John O'Groats and Land's End and also it is in between England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales equally around a 50 mile radius. But it's here that there's a very ancient tradition of kingship, especially at the dead center of the island, the Tim Wall, which we're gonna to go to. But we're in the museum now, so we're gonna have a look here first. You can see there's actually a representation of the kind of shape and size and terrain of the Isle of Man. And it proves that this was inhabited, not just from Neolithic times, but actually from Mesolithic times, potentially going back over eight or 9,000 years. So we're here at the Neolithic chambered tomb of the Cloven Stones near Baldrine uh, on the Isle of Man. This is a very important site. There's, uh, it's one of the most important here. You've got this strange stone which is split. And Matt is gonna describe the legend associated with that, but that's kind of where the name, the cloven or you know, the cloven stones come from. And also in 1815 in the Swarbrick manuscript, there's a description of the workers who dug deep into this mound when they were excavating here or kind of obliterating antiquarian style. And actually found some giant, what they call giant bones and a giant skull actually within this site, suggesting a race of giants inhabited this island. How big they were, what happened to them, we don't know. But for a long time, this manuscript was on display in the Manx Museum in the Isle of Man. So we have genuine giant accounts here on the Isle of Man at possibly the most famous site on the island. One of the interesting things about this is that they've actually just built it right next to this bungalow and obviously the people here don't really mind us coming in their front garden. You can see the car there, you can see the stones right next to it. So often this house comes up for sale because there's strange ghostly things that go on here. There's poltergeist activity, there's other such things. So it is a pretty mystical site, you know, even though it's still in someone's garden. Apparently, even if you buy the property, you don't own the stones. They're still owned by Manx Heritage on the island. But we're here. We're just allowed to walk around. We've got some neighbours just telling us all about it. So, yes, yeah, kind of a very, very interesting, very interesting site to visit. And you can see these beautiful stones just rising out of the ground here. Deep under this, a giant once was buried. So probably an ancient Manx king, probably pre-Viking, going back to prehistoric times. You can just see the cloven stone, the way it's split. This is hence the name, why it became like, you know, the devil's claw or something. I can't really see too many carvings on here or anything. But yeah, it's very, very interesting. Possibly the most famous site in all of the Isle of Man. cloven stones said to be cut in half by a Macuban sword owned by King Olaf. The sword was said to be so sharp it could cut through anything and Olaf rested the stone sword on the top of the stones and then gravity just took it through and split the stones in half. Also the orientation of the cloven stones is quite interesting because basically where we're looking at now directly ahead it's pretty much northeast and so we have an almost summer solstice sunrise alignment and you can see behind not too clearly but you can see that it kind of goes to fairly flat land with trees there now and so this could have been aligned to the summer solstice and then the opposite direction we have the winter solstice sunset 
to both of these could have been part of why this was built it could have been a chamber to make observations from it could have been a burial chamber of the giants i think this was a burial chamber of probably one of the ancient manx kings going back potentially thousands of years even to druid times or even before even it could be a burial place to going back to the neolithic where these stones are thought to be from going back you know 5,000 years and so this is pretty pretty amazing really it's got the Sun coming out now so we've got to get some nice shots we'll just have a little walk around with the Sun shining on the stones and uh, yes yeah, a very very interesting site I just love the fact we're just in front someone's front garden just wandering about people neighbors there just finding it funny that we're here and this is kind of a famous stone. This has been illustrated by antiquarians before this particular one. Obviously, we have the whole site concealed. This really wonderful little bungalow here on the Isle of Man. So we're here at King Ori's grave, which is around 5,000 years old, supposedly built by a community of farmers, and it had numerous chambers, but you can see David, Matt and, and uh, uh, Jennifer down there sort of investigating it. Um, but there were at least three chambers beyond the entrance. They were roofed, they were filled, they had burials in them. Uh, no remains apparently survived, so there's no evidence of giants or any bowls here. They found Neolithic uh, pieces in here though. Um, and it's a pretty interesting site, and you can kind of see here on the image what it would have looked like. So you would have had some kind of curved forecourt, like we find in Sardinia, we find it at Snap and other places like this. So King Ori, with whom the site is linked in legend, was supposed to be Godred the 11th century Norse Gaelic ruler of Dublin and the Isles, including the Isle of Man, who he took control of in 1079. Um, many of the sites are traditionally associated with him. It's supposedly a horned or Clyde can type. This is the sort of curved forecourt that we're seeing here. So it's pretty interesting, actually. It's, um, it's similar to the layer of Cashel Yunard. This is where some giant bones were found, which we're going to investigate while we're here. Um, but yeah, there are other sites in the area. It'd be great to get the drone up, but it's so windy here. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but I think it's around 5,000 years old. So let's just take a closer look. So the sun has come out. It's very nice. You can just see, it looks kind of unusual, the whole shaping of it. It's a little bit different. It's kind of classic Isle of Man style, apparently. We have a whole section down here in the sort of southern end. We have this line of stones that's been put around the edge, going all the way up to where Matt's standing. If we just take a walk in here, you can kind of see the kind of shape of it. Very, very intriguing. Here's the main entrance here, and it would have curved out in that direction and it would have also curved out where I'm standing here going up this way with multiple other tombs within it you see down at the base here you can see it kind of goes into a corner goes into a point these are quite big stones as well it's really quite an impressive sight and this is where you're supposed to climb through here go through this small kind of avenue into the main site We'll pass the camera through there. I don't know if I'm going to get through there. We'll certainly give it a go. And you kind of go into the site here. You see it all around here. Some of the larger stones around the edge. You know, this does date back to like, you know, 3000 BC at least. And it's right in the middle of a bunch of houses. So we just crossed over the road. Now we're going into the second part of King Ori's grave. We have to go past this stone. I'm gonna take a little walk down here behind this house. 
there's a lot of this on the island man it seems these sites are just kind of built you know are built around in modern times it's difficult to fly the drone somewhere like this but this is king ori's grave so let's take a look at this we've got part two here now this is a very tall monolith very impressive site so this is the remains of another chamber tomb again three enclosures it's never been excavated actually which is very very interesting so we're just here at the second part of king ori's grave here on uh, the isle of man now this is interesting the alignment's interesting matt has just pointed out to me that it's actually summer solstice sunrise aligned and winter solstice sunset aligned more or less and so these could have had astronomical functions as well as being potential burial places but the fact you've got such a massive megalith here this standing stone does suggest it could be some kind of marker some kind of astronomical marker and whether these sites were actually joined together is something i was just discussing with matt and they're not sure whether they were two separate sites built in one complex because it goes down to the river kind of behind the the main site here um, but it's just a fascinating place and the fact you've got like you know construction you've got houses built all around it and yet you can still visit these although they're almost like garden ornaments in some way uh, the forecourt is quite fragmentary but king ori this legendary character he was supposedly the king godred crovan seized the throne in 1079 he i think was regarded as a giant because it's a very very long grave and you can see the size of it kind of here you can see how long this is it's probably what 20 24 feet long goes all the way down here and at the end end we have what looks like a massive gravestone it's actually a massive monolith not dissimilar to what we find actually on Orkney and this looks like a kind of giant's grave and I believe it probably was before it became known as King Ori's grave in later times during the Manx kind of reign in the 11 10 to 1100s Matt is just pointing out again that behind this over in the distance behind the trees is a, a great mountain and so that would affect the alignment so it could still be summer solstice it could be more accurate than that they could be measuring either side of that you've got a shadow effect that Matt was discussing the fact that it could actually kind of come down the avenue and hit certain parts at certain times of the day so you could actually have it as some kind of calendar and you've got these massive massive kind of author stats here this is something you find on Orkney you found they found this in the Nessa Brodgar they found this in other sites in Orkney and this you know this it's the same kind of island design that we're finding not only in northern Scotland but here on the Isle of Man and in other areas but that's an impressive standing stone and I'm just really delighted to have been brought here by Matt and Kay actually there is a forecourt here as well in front of here we have this curved forecourt can't really see it too well now but there is evidence of it being here and so it is certainly like a summer solstice sunset alignment if we're going in that direction but you can see the different levels here we've got obviously the giant stone here so the stone almost looks like it's got carvings on it but it might just be natural or it might have been shaped when they were building the site and then it kind of goes down into this main grave here this megalithic tomb which is a classic kind of tomb we do find in england we do find in wales we do find in other areas around the country it's compelling large stones on the side there it may have had a lid on it as well so we're north of douglas at a place called laxey near the salmon river um, and these are where this King Ori's grave are. And these are quite famous on the island compared to some of the other sites. And it's just an impressive site. And if you're on the Isle of Man, you've got to come and check this out.